Hello guys, one of the most typical mistakes of developers of any kind, not just Laravel, is to not test their projects or their code on big amount of data and then when the project grows up, the errors start appearing and those errors or performance issues weren't noticed on small amount of data. So in this video, I will advise you to use Laravel features as seeds and factories. And I would advise to create those factories and seeds immediately when you create the models to help yourself in the future. So let's take a look at an example. For example, you have a project to show the users with amount of their posts. And I had a similar example in one of my previous videos about eloquent performance. So you need to show user and the amount of their posts. Pretty simple, right? And for testing, you just created some records manually like registered users. And in the database, you have like two users and 10 posts, for example. They are fake, but they're still something. And with that, you tested that this page works and loads pretty quickly. Cool. And of course, if you're smart, you're using Laravel debug bar package. I will show it here on top, which shows four queries, which is not a lot, and then five megabytes of memory and 33 milliseconds. So it's all low numbers. So cool. We can move on then to work on other features of our application, right? Stop. Have you tested this page on bigger amount of data with a lot of users and a lot of posts? And this is where Laravel seeders and factories may help you locally to test the thing locally. If you go to Laravel documentation and search for factories, for example, they are mostly emphasized in automated testing like database testing here. And also there's a section about seeding and how to write seeders and how to write factories like this. But what it doesn't emphasize enough, in my opinion, and in fact, documentation doesn't need to emphasize the why. The documentation is about how and what. And the why is actually for that exact reason to test your application manually with bigger amount of data to simulate what will happen in the future when the project grows up. So in my local project, I've created a few factory classes. So user factory, this comes default from Laravel. So you don't even need to create that. You can create the fake user with default Laravel code. So in your database seeder class, you either write user factory, and then the amount of users you need, for example, 10 users create like this, or you put that in a separate seeder file like PHP artisan make seeder user seeder, which I advise. And then inside of that user seeder, you create as many users as you want. So for that, for the user case, you don't even need to create the factory. But for other tables, you do PHP artisan make factory something with the model, or you can create it immediately when creating the model. So PHP artisan make model post minus F will create a factory for you. And in that factory, you just define what could be the potential fields with their values. And in here, you can use this faker a lot. And in this case, I will show you why it's important to have a real amount of data. So for example, for the posts, post text is likely to be a big amount of text, right? So for example, 5,000 characters. So you can fake a lot of data, do random relationship. This is by the way, not the most efficient way how to do the relationship because it does one query for every post. There are better ways to structure that. But anyway, you define the factories, then in your seeders, you define how many records do you need. So for example, two users in my case, and 10 posts. For my case, this is exactly what we did but now you can increase those numbers. So for example, let's see it a thousand users and 5,000 posts. What would that page show then? So let's remigrate fresh and seed. Of course, I'm doing that on my local database. So keep in mind all the database will be wiped, but the database will have the seeded data that you actually need. So while it is doing, let's take a look at the controller code for that page. And I'm showing users with the post relationship, which is cool, eager loading, but in the index blade, it's user posts count. And it's not the most efficient way. And we will see that exactly with thousands of records. So our seats have finished. And as I said, it's not the most efficient way because post seater took like 45 seconds. It could be done more efficiently, but I will leave that to another video. For now, let's just refresh our page and see what debug bar shows. So remember four queries, five megabytes of RAM and 33 milliseconds. Now on big amount of data, we have still loading, still loading, cool thousand queries to the database, 1.23 seconds and 75 megabytes of RAM. So this is the most worrying number. This number means how much RAM server RAM memory will this load page take. 
and only by using factories and faker with big amount of data you would see that this page is not optimized. The optimization is pretty simple actually. All you need is change user posts count to this because you're loading the posts from the controller already. So that could be step one of the optimization, not the final one. And if we refresh after just changing two symbols, cool, we have only two queries and not 1000. And the time is 164 milliseconds, which is cool. But we still have that number of 75 megabytes, which we can decrease by not loading the full posts. Because the problem is you're loading all the posts and only then doing the count. And each post, remember in the post factory, here it is, each post contains the text of 5000 characters. And that's all loaded into the memory, although actually we need only the count. So we can fix that by doing with count of posts like this and changing this to posts underscore count like this and we refresh and we have only seven megabytes of RAM, which is mostly actually used by my local Laravel valet. So in your case, it may be like minimum of 20 megabytes of seven megabytes, five megabytes. I remember it depends on the web server, but still it's decreased by a lot, by huge amount. So the point of this video is not about how to optimize that, but the point is to use factories and seeds from the very beginning. So immediately when creating artisan model, PHP artisan make model, for example, project do minus M4 migration, F for factory and S for cedar, and it would generate all of that and immediately fill in the fillables, the factory, the cedar, and then you will thank yourself in the future. What do you think? Do you use factories and cedars in your local testing or do you test the big amount of data manually? What is your advice for other developers? Shoot in the comments. And if you want to practice the factories and the cedars with PHP unit automated testing, I have a course on my Teachable. It's a pretty old course, but most of that is relevant. Maybe some syntax changed slightly from Laravel 5.8, but the logic of testing what is the text on the page, what is the data, it will use factories and seeds. So if you want introduction to automated testing, which is actually praised by people in the comments, you can go here. The link will be in the description below. And by purchasing my courses, you actually support this channel because then I have more time to shoot free videos on YouTube here. And see you guys in other videos.